So just a brief way of context, before I was at Nesta, I was at a think tank called Policy Exchange looking at technology policy. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at local government, and so I came across in particular these terms, digital government and the smart city agenda. And I think very much like Mike, I came to the conclusion uh, that smart cities tend to be cities mistakenly thinking they can procure something that will somehow transfer them into the realms of smart, which um, I wanted to entitle my last report, The Smart City Delusion. Uh, that got vetoed, but that's much my feeling of, of much of the smart city agenda. And likewise with the digital government agenda, where it's done badly, and unfortunately I think this is the majority right across the local government sector, and we're in a, a very a wonderful exception to that um, rule, far too often it's tech driven, it's what the digital face can cover up behind the scenes, and just putting on a new website, a new set of apps is never enough to transform a public service, especially given the level of the financial challenge that we now face. And the overwhelming conclusion I came to whilst at Policy Exchange was that real transformation starts with identifying fundamentally better ways of working, and most of them are primarily enabled by smarter use of data. Uh, digital comes down the line. Um, and the problem for the local government sector and for public services more broadly is that the fragmentation, the silos that Mike um, spoke about in his presentation um, exists both within um, and between um, local government bodies. And I'll just very briefly explain uh, why those limit smarter ways of working. Um, starting with things like shared services. Shared services we know uh, right around the UK, but in London as well, could save very, very significant money if they're done well. But when I started talking to local authorities and I said to them, show me how you use your data, they'd bring up um, a screen, they'd show me their GIS maps, they'd say, well, look how we've plotted this particular problem. Look in that northeast corner and um, how it uh, occurs and we target our resources there. I'd say that's fantastic, brilliant. What does that problem look like on the other side of your boundary? Nine times out of ten, they'd be like, well, we don't have that data. How are you going to design a shared service? How could London join up uh, its jigsaw or different pieces of data to design smarter services if we cannot see how the issues or opportunities or demand transcend borough boundaries? Uh, we know that if we can target resources effectively, if we can target interventions at the families or individuals who need it most, we can deliver more and better with less. Uh, troubled families is the classic example. We can have 30 separate organisations supporting one family. We know there are problems, though, where you don't identify troubled families for as re a reason as mundane as the child goes to school in the neighbouring local authority. And if they stop going to school and truancy is one indicator of a troubled family, you're, the family's local authority don't hear about it. Just through, as Mike said, this arbitrary, irrelevant distinction about the structure of government that is not a, meaningful to a citizen. We know that a smarter way of working is prediction and prevention, or prediction and early intervention. And I dearly, dearly wish that the film Minority Report had had a happy ending. But this <laughs> idea that you can see where things will happen and intervene when minimum harm has been caused, when problems are smallest and cheapest to resolve. Um, you can do it if you've got the data. You can't if it's fragmented. And finally, uh, we've mentioned open data already, and a huge amount of work, really positive stuff, right around the UK, particularly in London, has been done with open data. But we still see local authorities, London boroughs, who insist on having their own open data portal. And if you want people outside of government to build useful stuff for you, to innovate with it, with the greatest of respect, the population of your borough is not enough people yeah. to offer a viable business model for a developer to try and create a product with it. It's part of the reason TFL apps have been successful, is because you've got a population of 8 million. Um, and it takes really, really bold entrepreneurs who can get beyond that barrier. And we have some of them sitting right here, Dan Hubbard, I heard about, about three years ago when I was running an ill-fated commuting help website. Um, <laughs> please talk to them afterwards. But the point is they tried to initially build an amazing app that showed where you could park in London. There are still, to this day, five London boroughs who are not being cooperative and sharing their data with you. Building an amazing product, announced as the 15th most disruptive company in the world, is that correct? Um, it is nuts that we are not helping innovators like Dan to do that. It's the fragmentation of data. So, cut to the chase, where, where does that bring us today? I looked around the world saying, where is a model that solves that issue? And the most compelling by far 
was the model that Mike Flowers developed in New York City. And it's wonderful to have a presentation where I don't need to tell you about that model because we've heard about it. But imagine if London was able to pull in data from the 33 separate boroughs, or 32 plus one, and um, from all those different public sector bodies, so that for the first time, we could see how any particular issue, problem, set of demand transcended the whole city, so that uh, the boroughs and public um, sector leaders and frontline workers could decide for themselves how best to share resources, how best to target resources at areas of greatest need. Imagine if we had the expertise to predict and prevent problems from happening. What could we do with our budgets then if we intervened uh, before harm had been done? Uh, and finally, on the open data agenda, again, if we'd already sucked in all that data for government to use for itself, a subset of that unified data across the whole of London could then be released out at a capital-wide scale which would then give a far a greater, more cohesive data set to enable innovators like Dan and um, others like him to build successful models so that people outside of government can do more. Um, and it would <coughs> enable open data, rather than just being a cost centre to public sector bodies, you'd start saving money from it. You'd be investing in the time, the quality, the SLAs, so that we build on everything we've already done on open data and absolutely set it on fire so we go forward. So this leads us happily a meeting of minds uh, where we've got an amazing city data strategy, thanks to Andrew Collins. Uh, we've got the opportunity of a new mayor. Um, I will tell you, I left Policy Exchange and came to Nesta because I realised I didn't need to work for a think tank. I needed to work for a do tank. We needed to help no, no, make no. this happen and government wasn't going to do it for itself. We need some help and I hope Nesta can provide the support to enable uh, organisations not just in London, uh, but we're trying this in the North East as well, to see can we prove the case for an office of data analytics or whatever we wish to call it. Um, it may be different in different cities. Um, so tomorrow indeed we've got 11 local authorities coming together to brainstorm what would be an issue that we could try and tackle by bringing together data sets from multiple different public sector bodies. Um, what issue, if we could just stitch all our different, this a, stitch different bits of a jigsaw, put different bits of a jigsaw together, step back and see the big picture, what could we intervene uh, to try? Uh, and we want to start low tech, because we want to prove that point. I want to be able to go back to central government, city leaders. We want to be able to convince Sadiq Khan that no, this really, really works, and this deserves a hefty budget all um, of its own, so that um, Andrew can then go on to do every single line item in that city data strategy. Um, we realise, and uh, Mike has been very articulate on this today in saying that not even any other UK, uh, US city is like New York, and therefore we cannot expect that this is going to be copying and pasting the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics and expecting it to work in London. Uh, our Mayor is not uh, so sort of that supremely powerful executive <coughs> mayor. They've got the power of the pulpit, some executive powers, but not on the same scale. Uh, you've got five weak boroughs in New York City. We have uh, you know, 32, 33, uh, which are very powerful. You don't have city-wide teams on many issues. We have 33 separate organisations diagnosing, intervening and reporting back on problems. Uh, that sounds like a hell of a headache for any sort of change management initiative. And so we hope we'll be very honest about this, we'll be very transparent with what we're trying. We are bound to fail on some stuff. Uh, but our goal is that by the end of this year, Andrew and I would like to have solid data that proves that if you are willing to share your data, if you're willing to give it to an expert team of data scientists, you've got the time, resources, political backing to look at it, you can do things that are worthwhile. Uh, but for now, thank you very much. Thank you.